Okay, the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. We are talking about the limitation. How do we as Christians overcome limitation in our life? There are limitations that the enemy brought against the children of God that make it really impossible for the children of God to attain a certain height in their life. A great limitation in the life of the children of God. This is the work of the enemy. The enemy is only come to steal. When he steals, what does he do? He causes limitation. He comes to destroy. The enemy is to destroy. Once he destroys, what does he do? He creates limitation. But somebody come on earth, which is Jesus. He said, I come so that you might have life, have it more abundantly. When you have an abundant life, what happened? You destroyed, Christ came and destroyed limitation in your life. The blood of Jesus came and destroyed limitation in the life of the children of God. So when you are, when you are unlimited, guess what happened? You have comfort, you have freedom, you have peace, you have unity, you have joy. So the book of Romans chapter 10, be careful, be careful, uh, no noise, not too noise here. Uh, Romans chapter 10, then we read verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9. Thou is thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and, and shalt believe in thy heart thy God hath raised him from, from the dead. Thou shalt so, so be saved. Thou shalt be saved. You say, if you first, it's how you overcome limitation. The way to overcome limitation is to trust God. First thing is to trust God. And God gives you the, some of the characteristics, some of the things that He asks you to do so that you can have freedom, so that you should walk through limitation in your life. And those things that causes that limits you is sin. One of the first things is sin. When you go, when you let go of the past that hurts you, when you forgive those who have wronged you, and you forgive yourself, Sometimes when you do something, you don't forgive yourself. Sometimes you don't forgive people that hurt you, that do wrongs to you. If you don't do that, you create limitation in your life. Pay attention, this is very, very important for Christians. If you read in that chapter, Romans chapter 10, and you read... Uh, you read that verse 9. It said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, they shall be saved. So the first thing is just to confess. You confess Jesus. At the same time, forgive people that hurt you. There are people that might really hurt you in your life, particularly when you are young, when you are in school, when you do some certain things and they don't like, they hurt you. God wants you to forgive those people. Because if you carry that grudges in your heart, that becomes a pillar that blocks every blessings of God in your heart. 
That thing is not going to let you move forward. It will bring you down. It keeps making you thinking about it. It keeps making you becoming angry. You might not, sometimes you don't tell people about it. But you are angry about something somebody has done to you in the past. So God wants you to forgive those people and let that problem go. Once that problem goes in your heart, guess what happened? You open new doors for blessing. You open opportunity for yourself. God begins to come in to walk in your life. Because what is in your life, hunger is in your life that is in you, is blocking God from coming in. Hunger belongs to the enemy. Hunger belongs to devil. So what do we do? We take that hunger from us and throw it out. And Jesus came in. God came in and dwelled there in our heart. And once that happened, guess what happened? You have peace. You have joy. So, unforgiveness is like that. Sometimes you don't forgive people. That is a place that enemy want to dwell. The enemy want to dwell in a place that unforgiveness is. That's where the enemy want to dwell. And God cannot stay where unforgiveness dwells. God cannot stay where there's hatred. God cannot stay there because God is not, he doesn't hate, God is love. We sing in the song. God is love, God is love. We sing in the song. God is light. So light and darkness cannot stay in one place. Either the light come into the dark place and the darkness will disappear. So my brothers and sisters, my family, this is what God wants us to do. It's very, very important that we take time to learn the mystery of God. It's a mystery. It's a secret. The enemy make it as a secret. They make it look like a secret, but it's not. In reality, they are all there. But the enemy make it so difficult to forgive. To be healed. If you don't heal your heart, your heart, your heart is filled of junk, filled of stuff that you should leave it away. That God cannot come in there to dwell. God wants to dwell in a clean place, a place that when it comes in, you see your heart clean. Then God can use the opportunity and expand your scope, expand the opportunity that you have. And bless you. You can see a very big man, a very nice man, tall, a lady, very beautiful, pretty. You see people driving and they come out and you and you feel these are very good. Some of them are having so much problem in their heart. They are having difficulty. Peace, they don't have peace, they don't have love. They don't have joy. Their heart is filthy of something. But then when they open their mouth and speak, you think this is a very good people. So those are typical examples that you might not know. Somebody can come in front of you and talk eloquently. But you might not know that they are walking they are walking with filthiness. They are walking with problem. They are walking with challenge. They are walking with pain. They can't get over it. Except they come back to God and confess, and confess their sins to brothers and sisters. So this message will help tear down the wall in our life. What are those walls? The wall are strongholds. There are things in our heart, pay attention, 
that make the Spirit of God not to come into our heart. It could be hatred, it could be lying, it could be bad stuff. All the bad stuff are war that the enemy keeps in our life and make sure that the Spirit of God cannot come in. So it creates limits in our heart. It creates barrier. It creates barrier that will block God's strength in your life. So today, this message will help us to tear down those walls in our life. Often time we we place off, we place those limits in our life. And God is our God that has no limits. God has no limit at all. God is limitless. And if you do good things, if you do wrong things, good and bad are different things. If you know that you want to propel yourself to a greater height, do the will of God. Do what God asks you to do. Don't let any filthiness in your heart. Don't tell lies. There are no little, little things that we do. We tell little, little lies. And we think that is okay. No, it's not okay. Children of God can never do that because God takes some of those things very serious. And God is a God that has no limitation. If there's a little lies in our heart, we create limits on ourselves. We try to limit God in our life. Because we do some of the things that happen to us, we create those problems. Each time we read the scripture, the scripture will clearly explain the fundamental, what works, what God asks us to do, how we should follow Christ in humility, in sincerity, without reservation, without trying to say, I'm going to put this behind me, I'm going to put this so that I can use it next time. I'm going to put this lie, a little bit of lie, so that it can protect me from my job. I'm going to put this little hatred behind me. No, you got to let it go. Once you let it go, guess what happened? God comes in. That means that you don't limit God in your life. You don't limit his potentials. See if the thing is recording. Right so brothers and sisters, we are going to read for closing in Matthew Book of Matthew, chapter 7. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, and uh, we're going to read verse 20. Matthew 7, we read 20. They will read. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruit we shall know them. Pay attention. It said, by their fruits we shall know them. You see the orange? The orange don't taste like apple. Right? They don't taste the same. Banana, banana tastes different by their fruit. You see the fruit? Oh, banana. You eat it. Oh, it tastes like banana. You cannot take apple and eat and it tastes like banana. You're going to be like, how did this come? How did this happen? Apple tastes like banana. Yeah. So, so brothers and sisters, by their fruits, you should know it. Even if you close your eyes and eat banana, say, give me, put something in my mouth, and they put it in, and you eat. No, this is banana. This is not apple. Right? There's no way how you can miss that. There's no way to miss that. There's no way to make a mistake on that. So by their fruits, we shall know them. So the Bible time for increase. The spiritual activities has begun in the life of the children of God. Both good and it, both good and bad. Both good and bad. 
The devil is walking and God is walking with his people. But guess what? Christian, you must, it's a must, take, make a choice. Christian must make a choice. God is not going to come and force you to do the right thing. God will never force you. God has given you freedom. He called it freedom. Freedom of choice. Freedom to take decisions. Freedom to understand. Freedom of discernment. Freedom to choose. So, they're going to be both bad and evil, or good and evil. So within that, you can make a choice to choose good than evil. But the two is going to be presented in front of you to make a choice. So brothers and sisters, we're going to make a, a good choice. We're going to choose good rather than evil. So as the busy the enemy is, as busy he is, we believe God is busy gathering his people. And we also believe that equally, the Satan is busy experiencing or expressing hatred to those who love God, to those who do the work of God, to those who call his name. The enemy is expressing hatred to those people because he wants to tarnish their image character assassination, he doesn't want them to be heard. So the enemy want, want to dim the light. He want to bring in darkness to comprehend the light, God forbid. Lights always shine and take over darkness. And brothers and sisters, why God is doing this, I also believe, as I'm trusting God, that God will touch the heart of everyone. God is not limited. He is able to do what He will do. He is able to do what He promised Himself that He would do. But God works according in conjunction with our response. If you respond to him in good, he will accept you. But if you respond in bad, he will reject you. But each time we come back to him and plead for forgiveness, God is always be there to receive us back. The response of unbelief can hinder us. It can also hinder God from doing the mighty work in our lives. First, you need to believe, you need to trust God that God is able to do this, brothers and sisters. The topic today is no limits, no boundaries. If you started today, to trust God, to believe in Him, there is no boundaries of things you cannot do. The sky is your limit. But you will not supersede God, no. God is the supreme. God is too huge. But God is going to give us whatever He has promised us in our life. Blessings, good health, stability, Blessing that there will be no boundaries for this blessing that will be coming. We're going to go to God in prayer. We're going to allow God to use His Word to minister to us, making us perfect, getting ready for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray.